What would they be measuring? Gold. <laughs> I'm calling this Bravo Sierra. That's the spot, man. I can feel it. I hope so. Fingers crossed? Yeah. yeah. I'm looking for a vault. This one might tell the tale. We got a chance of actually finding treasure. We got a lot of secrets yet to unfold. I think we're all going to find this artifact extremely interesting. I'm looking for this borehole to penetrate a treasure vault. After discovering a massive treasure, Marty Legina could easily retire, yet he remains determined. Alongside his brothers Jim and Rick, Marty is focused on making progress in the money pit before the season comes to an end. This legendary spot has interested treasure hunters for over two centuries, with countless failed attempts to uncover its hidden riches. Why is everyone on the show so eager for the next payday following such a monumental find? Join us as we uncover the latest excavation that could completely transform the Legina's quest for gold. The big drill into EE 5 and 14.5. The team is working against the swift passage of time, driven by the hope of discovering something that will bring an end to the long-standing legends of vast riches supposedly buried on the island. They focus on a specific site near an old garden shack, believed to possibly hide a vault or significant clues. As the drilling equipment begins to penetrate the earth, each layer dug up could potentially be the one that contains the answers they have tirelessly sought. This endeavor is filled with a mix of technical precision and raw hope. Rick, Marty, and Jin are not just digging through soil, they are cutting through layers of history, each one holding the potential to redefine what is known about the island's legendary status. They search not merely for objects, but for the confirmation of a legend, aiming to find tangible proof of the tales that have persisted through generations. Dr. Ian Spooner and Dr. Fred Michael, specialists in geoscience, have recently conducted water sampling tests that suggest a new location for drilling, labeled E5 and 14.5. This site is particularly interesting as it is thought to lie directly above a large deposit of precious metals, buried deep under about 100 feet of earth. The integration of scientific methods with traditional treasure hunting techniques lends a new level of legitimacy to the team's efforts, potentially guiding them closer to a historic discovery. The act of drilling into borehole E, 5N 14.5, is laden with anticipation. Each movement of the drill, each extraction of earth could be the moment of discovery. This operation symbolizes a major commitment of resources and hope, encapsulating the team's determination to succeed where many others have given up. Rick, Marty, Jen, and their colleagues are engaged in more than a treasure hunt. They are part of a narrative that ties them to the many who have come before all driven by the allure of Oak Island's hidden riches. The hunt is a test of their resolve and a confrontation with the skeptics who doubt the island holds any treasures at all. As the days of the search dwindle, the team faces the increasing likelihood of another year passing without the breakthrough they seek. Their efforts on Oak Island represent a blend of history, science, and sheer human determination against nature's challenges. Each team member knows that the window for this year's search is closing quickly, yet their spirits remain high, driven by the possibility that they are just a few feet away from a life-changing discovery. The search on Oak Island is not just about the physical treasures that may lie buried. It is about the quest for validation, the excitement of possibly rewriting history, and the personal satisfaction of solving one of the most talked about legends in treasure hunting. For Rick, Marty, and Jin, these remaining days are fraught with tension and excitement, filled with the hope that they will finally uncover what has been hidden for so long, proving to themselves and the world that their efforts were not in vain. The cold winds of the Atlantic may be a harsh reminder of the challenges they face, but they also serve as a motivator to keep pushing forward towards the unknown that lies beneath. Dr. Spooner and Dr. Michael have made a clear statement that they have detected metals in the area which they believe are not part of the natural surroundings. This has led them to suggest that they might have found a crucial spot in their ongoing search. As the drilling starts, there's an air of expectancy. Everyone involved is hopeful that this might be the moment they uncover something significant. However, previous experiences have shown that initial excitement often leads to disappointment. As such, a layer of skepticism overlays their optimism 
The history of the site is filled with similar moments where the promise of discovery turned out to be nothing more than natural or common materials. The process of drilling is not just about physically boring into the earth. It's about penetrating layers of accumulated sediments that have built up over centuries. Each layer holds the potential to reveal something new, yet more often than not, it simply confirms the presence of mundane earth materials. As they drill deeper, the suspense builds, with each foot drilled bringing them potentially closer to a significant find, or another dead end. Once the core is extracted from the drilled site, there is a rush of initial excitement. This could be it, the moment they find something that justifies their efforts and the resources spent. However, as they inspect the core, the contents reveal the familiar sight of sand, just sand, devoid of any sign of the metals they were hoping to find. This is a common outcome in treasure searches like this, where the dream of uncovering hidden wealth often clashes with the reality of geological and material mundanity. This repetitive cycle of hope, followed by disappointment, is a hard reality for the team. Each promising indication that leads only to sand or other common materials adds to the growing frustration. Despite this, the search continues, driven by the slim hope that the next core or the next site might turn out differently. Dr. Spooner suggests that perhaps it is time to pause the active search. Letting the site rest might allow them to gather more information from the environment, such as changes in water composition that could hint at metal presence nearby. This approach signifies a shift from aggressive searching to a more measured observational strategy, reflecting a more scientific method where data and environmental feedback guide the next steps rather than mere intuition. Pausing the drilling to study the environment gives the team a chance to rethink their plans as they face the tough challenges on Oak Island. Flood tunnel, is it real or not? The decision to pause drilling and focus on environmental analysis marks a point of reflection for the team. It's an opportunity to reassess their strategies and perhaps develop new ones based on the information they have gathered so far. This pause is not just a physical break, but a mental and strategic one, where the lessons learned from repeated failures might pave the way for more focused and informed attempts in the future. Throughout these cycles of search, anticipation, and often disappointment, the broader implications of their endeavor become apparent. They are not just searching for metals or treasures. They are also exploring the limits of human persistence and the boundaries between hope and reality. Each drill that brings up only sand is a reminder of the enormous challenges they face, not just the physical barrier of the earth, but also the psychological barrier of expectation versus reality. As another season on Oak Island concludes, Rick, Marty, Craig, and their team face significant disappointment. Despite advanced technology and strong signals suggesting a large quantity of metal buried in the money pit, they have yet to unearth these metals. This ongoing failure to recover the expected treasures continues to dampen spirits and fuel skepticism. The team starts each digging season with optimism, bolstered by data that seemingly points directly to hidden metals. This optimism, however, regularly collides with the challenging reality of treasure hunting, a field fraught with more failures than successes. The cycle of excitement followed by disappointment is a tough reality for the team, as each promising signal inevitably leads to inadequate outcomes, leaving them with more questions than answers about what lies below. One of the main challenges in their search is the geological composition of the search area. The soil, a mix of sand and clay, complicates their efforts. While sand typically facilitates the movement of water, the clay in the mix makes the soil dense and less permeable, hindering water flow. This peculiarity raises doubts about the natural conditions around the garden shaft and suggests the possibility of engineered barriers or structures meant to protect whatever is buried. The team's hypothesis about a flood tunnel, an engineered tunnel thought to connect the ocean to the money pit, deliberately flooding the area to protect buried treasure, gains some credence from these findings. If such a tunnel exists, it could be the most ingenious booby trap ever devised, designed to prevent treasure hunters from reaching the storied riches. The enduring legend of a treasure guarded by such a flood tunnel has captivated imaginations for over two centuries. 
Many believe that the true protection for the treasure is not supernatural, but rather the result of human ingenuity, specifically designed to thwart those who dare to uncover it. However, despite these captivating theories, the team's efforts to prove the existence of the tunnel or to find the treasure itself have consistently been met with setbacks. Year after year, the team returns to the island, driven by a mix of hope and determination, each season armed with new strategies based on the previous year's learnings. Yet each season also ends with the tools being packed away, the site remaining undisturbed, and the treasure, if it exists, remaining hidden. This repetitive cycle of high hopes and deep disappointments is not just a physical or financial drain, but also a mental and emotional one. Each fruitless dig, each unproductive season, chips away at the team's morale, challenging their resolve and raising the inevitable question. Is there really anything to be found? The quest on Oak Island is more than a simple treasure hunt. It is a profound test of persistence and faith. It challenges the limits of human ambition and patience, pitting the team's modern technology and methodologies against the cunning and foresight of historical figures who may have engineered the island's traps centuries ago. Moreover, each unsuccessful dig not only provides a lesson in humility, but also in the complexity of interpreting historical clues and geological data. The island itself becomes a formidable opponent, its puzzles guarded by layers of earth that are as unyielding as they are silent. As the seasons progress, the team's methodology evolves. They grow more methodical in their approach, relying increasingly on environmental clues and historical records to guide their efforts. They develop new drilling techniques and bring in different experts to shed light on the perplexing conditions they encounter. Each step forward is measured, each hypothesis rigorously tested against the harsh realities of the search. The pursuit of hidden treasures has become tiresome, dragging on for five years with each annual review holding a diminishing promise of success. Over 600 wells have been dug, yet clear answers remain elusive. The discovery of metals in the water has sparked some interest, suggesting there might be something valuable below. But the true nature of these metals is still unclear. There is a tone of desperate hope in the team's discussions. They want to believe that these metals signal the presence of valuable deposits, despite past disappointments where promising signs led nowhere. This cycle of hope and disillusionment is becoming a familiar pattern. Even so, the team's spirit is not entirely dampened, buoyed by the professional opinions of two accomplished scientists who insist there is significance in their findings, not mere coincidental occurrences. Looking ahead to the next year, the group is not yet ready to concede defeat. They plan to delve deeper, exploring new methods and areas, driven by a mix of determination and necessity. This begs the question of when their steadfast pursuit might cross into the bounds of impracticality. At what point does their quest stop being a methodical search and become a chase driven by mere hope and vague hints? A key meeting to review new data sparks fresh urgency, pushing the team to explore the strange money pit despite constant setbacks. Historic finds from H8 and RF1. A crucial meeting is on the horizon, set to review more data and outline further strategies. At the heart of their explorations is the Money Pit, an infamous site that has sparked numerous expeditions, each driven by the hope of discovery. Yet despite these efforts, the pit remains as strange as ever, its unanswered questions tightly sealed. This year, the team made it down to 95 feet and began horizontal drilling, a new approach hoped to uncover the garden shaft's puzzles. However, nature intervened dramatically with a significant flood, halting their progress. Such setbacks are not only physical barriers, but also serve as poignant reminders of the challenges they face in uncovering long-hidden treasures. The determination within the team is striking. They are chasing not just physical riches, but the thrill of solving a complex challenge, piecing together small clues that might lead to a significant discovery. Every metal fragment and water anomaly is a clue in a larger puzzle they are committed to solving, despite widespread skepticism about their chances of success. Beyond the physical search, this quest is about the travel itself, the theories crafted, the thrill of potential discovery, and the unyielding drive to pursue elusive answers. This commitment raises the stakes each year, with the team diving deeper into their exploration 
undeterred by the monumental obstacles they frequently encounter. As years accumulate, one wonders whether they are drawing any closer to the truth or simply sinking deeper into an abyss of endless questions. The challenge is not just in the physical digging, but in maintaining the belief that there is something worth finding. This belief is what keeps the team going, pushing them to test new theories, to interpret every piece of data as a possible lead, and to endure the physical and emotional toll of their endeavors. Each piece of metal, each change in water quality is scrutinized, discussed, and debated. These are not just scientific observations. They are pieces of hope, threads in a larger tapestry that the team is desperately trying to weave together. The possibility of uncovering something truly valuable keeps them returning year after year despite the increasing challenges and the growing doubts about their ultimate success. The ongoing interest in the tunnel leading to what is commonly referred to as the baby blob highlights a mix of persistent hope and growing frustration. Despite significant time and resources dedicated to exploring this area, the results have repeatedly fallen short of expectations. Dr. Fred Michael asserts that the metals found in the water must originate from a significant source below the surface. Yet actual findings to support this claim have been minimal. This discrepancy between expectation and reality has become a recurring theme in the exploration efforts. The team has extensively drilled around the baby blob area with each attempt ending in disappointment. This continuous cycle of anticipation and letdown prompts questions about the effectiveness and direction of their search. The decision to extend the excavation northeast between the baby blob and the garden shaft is driven by a hope to finally uncover something conclusive, yet the track record suggests caution in expecting too much. The broader region surrounding the money pit has offered up some intriguing clues in three distinct locations, which are often cited as evidence of potential riches hidden below. Aladdin's cave, for instance, is a dramatically named cavern that sits 150 feet below the surface. It has provided water samples with traces of precious metals and evidence of wooden structures. These findings suggest historical human activity, but fail to deliver the substantial treasures sought after. Observations like, look at all the wood, highlight the scattered remnants found, which while indicative of past human presence, do not provide the conclusive evidence of significant value. These fragments raise numerous questions and offer just enough interest to maintain the search, but they fall short of confirming the presence of the fabled riches. Borehole RF1, unveiled in 2019, became notable for revealing large wooden beams inscribed with Roman numerals and an ancient pickaxe traced to Scandinavian origins. This find points to historical human activity at considerable depths. The beams, found over 100 feet underground, and the pickaxe suggest significant ancient construction efforts, yet they do not confirm substantial treasure. This discovery adds a layer of historical intrigue to the site, indicating possible ancient or medieval activities linked to Scandinavian explorers or settlers. Similarly, Borehole H8, excavated in 2017, yielded intriguing artifacts at a depth of around 180 feet. The findings included fragments of parchment and leather bookbinding, indicating the possible presence of a historical vault or archive. These fragments were found near a cavern suggested by a seismic survey to be about 10 feet tall and 160 feet deep. The parchment and leather bookbinding fragments hint at the existence of books or manuscripts, potentially related to early European settlers or explorers. The significance of these finds lies in their contribution to the complex history of Oak Island, where various artifacts have been discovered over the years, suggesting a rich tapestry of human activity. The wooden beams in borehole RF1, marked with Roman numerals, hint at meticulous construction efforts, possibly for storage or structural purposes. The ancient pickaxe traced to Scandinavia aligns with theories of Norse exploration in North America long before Columbus. In borehole H8, the parchment and bookbinding fragments suggest that documents or books were buried deep underground, possibly to protect them from the elements or as part of a larger treasure. These discoveries contribute to the ongoing search for answers about the historical activities on Oak Island, where explorers, settlers, and possibly treasure hunters may have left their marks over the centuries. 
interesting finds from boreholes RF1 and H8 add historical intrigue, but the elusive treasure still drives the team's ongoing search. Myth or truth of the money pit? Both boreholes RF1 and H8 with their respective finds underscore the meticulous and layered history of Oak Island, where each discovery adds a piece to the puzzle of the island's past. While no substantial treasure has been confirmed, the artifacts provide valuable clues to the historical activities that have taken place, revealing a narrative of exploration, construction, and preservation that spans centuries. These discoveries, while intriguing and historically valuable, point more to a site rich in artifacts rather than the treasure trove many have hoped to find. Each anomaly and piece of evidence fuels further speculation and exploration. Yet the actual treasures, gold, jewels, or other valuable items, remain elusive, perpetually suggested, but never confirmed. The narrative of the money pit has thus been characterized by a series of exciting finds that lead to further questions and continuous explorations. Each digging season renews hope and spawns new theories, yet consistently ends with the treasure seemingly just beyond reach. The pattern of exciting discoveries followed by inevitable disappointments raises critical reflections on the true nature of the quest. Are these explorers uncovering a historical treasure site, or are they simply caught in a loop of hopeful excavation and inevitable disillusionment? As the years pass, the excavations become more extensive, the theories more complex, and yet the purported treasure remains untouched, buried under layers of earth and water. The Money Pit continues to be a compelling story of historical curiosity intertwined with modern myth-making. This quest, driven by occasional finds of wood, metal, and ancient relics, captivates those involved and observers alike. Yet it also invites skepticism about the practical value of continuing such an elusive search. The quest for the Money Pit on Oak Island has long been fueled by a tantalizing possibility of discovering hidden riches yet actual finds have been disappointingly scant. Each year, locations like RF1 and H8 are touted as potential breakthrough sites, sparking fresh waves of excitement and anticipation. However, despite the fervor and enthusiasm led by Rick and his team, the outcomes have routinely fallen short of the significant discoveries hoped for. The team's efforts, characterized by annual summaries of progress, often highlight the amount of ground covered yet they rarely culminate in the discovery of any substantial treasure. This cycle of high hopes, followed by mediocre results, calls into question the effectiveness of their continued excavations. Year after year, the conclusion of the digging season is marked by emotional speeches that stir nostalgia and maintain a childlike belief in buried treasure. This sentimentality, while motivating for the team, increasingly appears as a thin veil over the reality of repeated failures. The emphasis on maintaining the dreams of youth in the face of hard, often disappointing realities suggests a poignant but potentially misplaced determination. While maintaining hope is commendable, the actual lack of substantial findings undercuts the optimism with a sense of futility. The pattern is well-worn. Each season ends with promises of new potential and continued exploration. Speeches are delivered that are meant to rally and inspire, yet they closely resemble a rehearsed script more suited to a theatrical production than a serious treasure hunt. The proclamations of impending success and groundbreaking progress persist, yet the vault of riches that is the heart of the entire endeavor remains untouched and arguably no closer to being found. The narrative of two boys from Michigan pursuing their childhood dream of uncovering hidden treasure has indeed captured the imagination of many, turning their quest into a story filled with adventure and the thrill of the hunt. However, the reality underneath this captivating storyline is a decades-long expedition that has yielded more enthusiasm than evidential success. Despite the team's dedication and the application of scientific methods, the legendary treasure of Oak Island continues to elude them. As each digging season concludes, the team's resolve is tested by the continual absence of significant discoveries. Yet they return, driven by a mixture of nostalgia, hope in the sheer human desire to uncover hidden things. This cycle of hope, anticipation, and eventual disappointment has become a defining feature of the Oak Island treasure hunt. 
The promise that next spring could bring the final discovery serves to perpetuate the quest, yet this oft-repeated promise is starting to strain credibility. The so-called Fellowship of the Dig, composed of enthusiastic treasure hunters, seems to draw as much from the myth of the hunt as from any factual promise of success. The ongoing search, supported by historical curiosity and a potent mix of fact and folklore, raises questions about the balance between the pursuit of historical understanding and the allure of an enduring legend. The fascination with the hunt continues, supported by the charm of the unresolved and the potential for great discovery. Yet the substantial outcomes necessary to justify such fervent efforts remain elusive. As the team gears up for another season, the familiar narrative promises new opportunities and potentially history-making discoveries. However, the cycle of anticipation and lack of fulfillment prompts a critical examination of the venture. Is the continued pursuit a testament to human determination and hope? Or has it become a quixotic path, fueled more by the romance of the hunt than by a realistic expectation of success? The story of Oak Island, while rich in drama and intrigue, is equally a narrative of human endeavor, expectation, and the often harsh reality of elusive fortunes. This enduring saga is a vivid illustration of the complexities of treasure hunting, where the line between reality and legend is continually blurred, and the pursuit itself often becomes as significant as the treasure that may or may not exist beneath the island's storied surface. Oak Island isn't the only place with hidden wealth. Around the world, other islands hold their own treasure stories waiting to be found. Pirate Gold on Frigate Island. But Oak Island is not the only one covered with unanswered questions and many treasures to be found. Isla Robinson Crusoe in Chile is renowned for its historical link to treasure legends. Discovered by Spanish sailor Juan Fernandez in 1574, the island served as a pirate hideout during the 17th and 18th centuries. In 1715, a Spanish sailor named Jean Esteban allegedly buried a vast treasure here, which was purportedly found in 2005. The legend tells that this hidden bounty was amassed from plundered ships and coastal raids, adding an aura of daring adventures to the treasure's mystique. However, the treasure, including 600 barrels of gold coins and jewels valued up to $10 billion, remains untouched due to legal disputes with the Chilean government, which claims the treasure as national property. Despite numerous expeditions and ongoing litigation, the exact location and the full extent of the treasure continue to elude treasure hunters and historians alike. Freegate Island in the Seychelles was once a favorite spot for pirates to hide. These pirates would attack ships traveling to and from Goa, a major trade route during that era. One pirate, known as Olivier Levasseur, or Captain Labousse, is believed to have hidden his treasure on this island. Despite many people looking for it over the years, the treasure has not been found. This has kept the island on the radar for those who dream of discovering lost treasures, hoping to uncover the riches that are rumored to be buried deep within its soil. Ile Sainte Marie, known locally as Nosy Baraja in Madagascar, is another island with a rich pirate history. Renowned pirates, including William Kidd, frequented this island, which was dubbed a pirate's paradise. The common belief is that these pirates hid their layout on the island, burying it in various places. This has led to ongoing searches by treasure seekers who explore the island thoroughly, looking for any signs of the buried loot. The allure of finding hidden treasure continues to draw adventurers to Ile Sainte Marie, enhancing its reputation as a treasure island with a storied past. Porto Farina in Tunisia was an important base for Maltese pirates in the 17th century. These pirates launched attacks on ships navigating the Mediterranean Sea. Legends suggest that these pirates buried substantial amounts of gold coins on the island as a way to safeguard their stolen goods. The tales of hidden treasures in Porto Farina continue to captivate those fascinated by pirate history, bringing them to the island in hopes of finding hidden riches. The island of Roatan, situated off the coast of Honduras, is also rumored to be a site of hidden pirate treasure. In the 17th century, it was used as a base by English and Dutch pirates. There are stories suggesting that pirates, including Henry Morgan, buried their treasures on Roatan. While some small artifacts have been discovered, 
the bulk of the treasure that is rumored to be there has not been found. The Witta Galley, a pirate ship that sank off the coast of Cape Cod in 1717, is renowned for the treasure it reportedly carried. The ship was led by the pirate Samuel Bellamy. Its wreck was found in 1984, and since then, over 200,000 artifacts, including gold and silver coins, have been recovered. The Witta is the only confirmed pirate shipwreck where a significant hoard of treasure has been discovered. These locations, rich with stories of pirates and historical accounts of hidden treasures, continue to be places of great interest and excitement for those seeking hidden riches. Each site has its own unique history and tales that contribute to the extensive and diverse stories about hidden treasures around the world. These sites continue to be popular destinations for adventurers, historians, and treasure seekers, each drawn by the possibility of discovering something valuable and historic. The allure of these treasures not only involves the potential financial gain, but also the thrill of connecting with a piece of history. Is the money pit on Oak Island just a wild goose chase? Or is there truly a hidden treasure waiting to be found? Share your thoughts with us and let us know what you think. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more intriguing content.